guys. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you're here. Um, if you get the chance and you're so inclined, please hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you hit the bell notification or the bell icon, it'll notify you when I upload new videos and also when I go live. But today's video is going to examine my current collection and pick out what I think are my top five big overbuilt larger knives. Knives that I've had in the collection for a while that may, you know, be able to do the things that are outside of what we do in our EDC. Um, things that we might want to do some serious cutting or we might want to do some serious processing of some materials or we might want to just go out and beat on um, a knife you know we might have some uses for the knife that we just want the best locking mechanism the best blade steel the best not as necessarily slicing geometry but just a geometry where you've almost got a little hand axe so what I've done is I have gone through my collection because um, again, what I try to review here or do overviews on guys or knives that I have come into owning, that I've purchased my money on, that I've used, just so I can give you my opinion. It might not match up with your opinion of the knife and that is okay, we are all different. But what I can assure you is the opinions that I'm giving you are Actual so the knives that we just went through as I was opening up our little uh, Please subscribe to my channel um, thoughts um, We're going to now get to what I consider the top five Overbuilt knives in my collection and we will go in descending order starting with number five This is the version one of the Max Ace Babylon the Max Ace Babylon is a button lock it is every bit a full-size knife. It is a chonky knife. It is a very unique knife. The button lock on it works as well as any in my collection. The action on it is absolutely spot on. It is titanium handles with an M390 blade. Uh, again, the blade stock is thick i didn't want to get into measuring stuff but just to give you an idea fifteen thousandths or 0.15 so this classifies to me as a big as a heavy use knife it's a knife that i do carry from time to time in my adc it's a knife that I enjoy, um, even though it's on the larger size, and it's a knife that I can call on if I'm going to be uh, cutting God knows what. I mean, this is a knife that I don't mind putting through the paces, and that is number five in my current top five big knives or overbuilt knives, and that's the Max Ace Babylon version one. Just so you guys know, the only difference in the version 2 is it has a little locking switch here that allows you to lock it open for additional security or lock it shut. I think that was brought into play because lefties were having issues accidentally depressing that, but what do I know? Number 4 is probably one of the biggest surprises that's come into my collection. And I forget or I would give them credit who recommended this knife to me, but this is by far the most economical big knife I've got in my collection. It is a Tucson TS346. It is on washers. I failed it because I'm under the camera. I failed it again. This knife is on washers, not bearings. It is a giant, two giant chunks of titanium with a three quarters, 90% backspacer with night mornings uh, maker's mark and tucson there a little bit of branding on that backspacer but the blade is very clean it's a d2 blade um, it does have tucson d2 and the model number in the fuller there but if you look at this blade it is very thick it is 
very substantial in my hand and for a big knife with that forward choil it is extremely slicey unfortunately i've cut through all my paper so we can take my field notebook and see how it cuts through cardboard so even though it's a big hardy knife it is very very slicey I love the action. I'm not usually a big fan of washers, but this knife, I love the way that it's kind of got a hydraulic drop. I love the way that the blade not only is perfectly centered, but it sits into that little inset there. I love the way that it flicks when I don't fail it. It is a chunk, guys. I wish I knew the weight on it. I'll list these all in the description, these top five, so you guys can look them up and get some more specific information. This knife I know is in stock at White Mountain Knives right now in a tight, uh, anode finish, and it's under $100, and I can already hear people saying, but D2, D2 is not heat treated right. Guys, buy this knife, stick it through a car door. If it bends or fails on you, reach out to Javon and I'll buy it, but I will need pictures. Um, I don't think there's gonna be any problem with this knife if you're looking for a very economical, hard use, well-built, field ready because it's made with washers. Um, and just a great knife, guys. And this would be number four after the Babylon, which costs three times as much as this, and that is the Tucson TS-346. Moving on is an American-made knife that some people will argue that it's not a heavy or hard-built knife, but I think that the Hinderer 3.5-inch or 4-inch blade styles definitely qualify as a hard use, or in my hand, which is a medium to large size hand, I consider this a full-use knife. Um, this particular Hinderer is the Hinderer XM18, it is in battle bronze titanium finish. I've added a contoured hinder titanium scale. Um, it is the uh, Spanto blade design, so it's got a very thick tip kind of that you can use, even though I wouldn't want to pry with it. You could use this tip for more hardy type of applications than some of the thinner tips on knives. The action on this knife is impeccable. It's S45VN. It carries like a smaller knife, but it handles and cuts material and locks up and lets me know that I've got a very substantial knife in my pocket or in my pack. And I know that if I have to depend on this knife, whether I'm feather sticking, whether I'm prepping for something, whether I'm prepping food, whether I'm trying to cut myself out of a briar patch, that this knife will live up to the challenge. And that is my number three, made in the USA, Hinderer, Clip, or Hinderer XM18. Moving on, brings us to number three, which is another made in the USA knife. And it just happens to be the biggest of the Medfords that I have in my collection. This is the Medford Midi Marauder. I would love a Marauder H, which is a good bit larger than this knife, but in all true skies, with my hands, medium to large size hands, this is every bit what I would consider an overbuilt and full size knife. I consider this a hard use knife. It's got this hard use knife. It has this very wicked compound grind with a hollow behind the edge and a flat up at the tanto there. The blade stock is very, very thick. It is S35VN. It is two slabs of titanium on each side of that blade. Um, and again, from a hard use knife that I can bring to bear on really any materials that I'm working with. Um, I don't talk about self-defense knives, guys. I don't think that's what knives are for. They're tools. But this knife would be a detractor if you were ever in that situation. 
and if you're ever out on a campsite or if you're on the trail or heaven forbid you get stuck in a bunch of kudzu while you're trying to walk out of your hike a medford midi marauder will more than cut you out so when i talk about oversized large knives in my current collection number two out of five is another made in the usa and it is the hinderer midi marauder so moving on to number one the medford midi marauder being number two brings us to another hinderer this is the hinderer eclipse which has a little bit different blade style this is the flipperless variant of the eclipse this has a narrower i would consider thicker kind of like a large 940s blade compared to the xm18 the reason i chose it over the xm18 and over the medford is i really like the narrowness of this blade shape it is a very very able cutter it is cpm 20 cv it is wicked sharp wicked strong blade it does have the stonewash bronze lock side and it also has a titanium smooth stonewash show side scale um, i've added blue hardware to it makes me not like the knife a little more makes it a little bit more unique but the reason that i put it number one in my hard use category is if i was going to grab one of these five knives to take out and just really beat the hell out of or need to use it in hard use situations i think my number one would be the hinderer eclipse the flipperless eclipse so in descending order number one we have the flipperless eclipse number two we have the medford midi marauder number three we have the hinder three and a half inch xm18 number two we have the tucson ps346 number four that is and then number five is the max ace babylon first edition guys I appreciate each of you stopping by anytime you stop by to check out one of my videos. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you lasted through if you made it this long. I appreciate you all. Please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Continue to look out for each other. Um, we are the knife community, part of the knife community. We um, spend a lot of time together, whether we're in chats or whether we're in live streams or whether we're just communicating on a Discord or we're communicating on a anywhere, you know, and I see it all the time. A little bits of drama here, a little bits of drama there. That's normal. But guys, all I ask is that you try to understand other people's opinion. You keep love in your heart. You choose debate over hate. You know, I love you all, always. And I appreciate you all always. Thank you again. Peace.